Did Ash by Elegance, aka Dana Brooke, deliver on a big championship match? Daddy Dom is done with Liv Morgan breaking her heart. Bailey goes gong ho on Tiffany's Money in the Bank briefcase. Deanna picks up another win from Thunder Rosa in a lumberjack match. Diamante and Layla Hirsch destroyed each other on ROH main event. And why is Mercedes Money keep running away from Britt Baker? <laughs> Welcome if you're entering the bell, this is DS and this is your Women's Wrestling Weekly. Oh my god, so much is happening from wrestling right now, from the road to SummerSlam, from WWE to AEW heading into All In, from this like randomly amazing ROH main event match, and we got this huge TNA Slam anniversary, the Dana Brooke Ash by Elegance match that you've been waiting for. So let's jump right into everything. But before that, if you haven't checked our interview with Chelsea Green, go check that right now. But let's jump right into SmackDown. WWE SmackDown was super fun. We first had Nia Jackson Bailey like satellite promo battle first of all both of them looked amazing but especially bailey she popped off this week from the hair to makeup to the fit she's really upped her game here she's like okay now it's on national tv that i've got trunks uh. with that bbl bailey comment last week so let's just serve here bbl bailey this segment was interesting so they brought back this 2017 situation with naya injuring bailey's shoulder before her big summer slam match and bailey calls naya big clumsy and reckless and naya was just like really bothered by it she takes off her headpiece and just leave the interview inadvertently i'm kind of comparing it to how we built naya and becky storyline recently with that storyline we also went back in time and brought back the infamous punch that caused the whole bloody becky the man and naya there was like yeah i did that so what i made the man and i'm gonna break you yet again and not only and i mean no shade but i honestly forgot about the 2017 injury situation with bailey but I also don't really get why Naya inside the storyline would be bothered by the fact that she injured Bailey instead of like, yeah, I'm gonna break you again and your BBL booty again. I was a bit confused about it, but I really did like that Bailey is shooting back hard. She's here to show that this babyface run will be very different from the babyface run from like five, six years ago. And this situation bleeds to Tiffany Stratton versus Michin match where Naya is like so sweet. She comes out with Tiffany. She's telling Tiffany that she's so proud of her, showing the full generosity of the queen to her princess. By the way, I freaking love Tiffany's white and baby blue gear here. So damn cute. Another really great match from Michin. Love the bigger booty taunt from Mia. I mean, nothing's gonna beat the spread cheeks one that Naya does, but I don't think anyone has audacity to do that, to be honest, on national TV. And the Alabama slam from Tiffany to Mia on the outside looks sick. And at the end, Naya interrupts grabbing Michin's leg, letting Tiffany set up for the prettiest moonsault ever, but she sees Bailey outside who attacks Naya with a briefcase. Then she goes on to just destroy the poor money in the bank briefcase, letting Michin pick up a win, roll up win on all distracted Tiffany. Yeah, you heard that right. Our new Nat Michin won here and she pinned Tiffany Stratton. I mean, Tiffany already said that she'll get a custom briefcase made anyway, so it's not like a huge loss. Come on, I'm waiting for a WWE shop. And also, WWE made like this music video for Tiffany in collaboration with Scene Queen. Love that for Tiffany. Yeah, I can see that this week the creative really, really focused on making Bailey look strong. She brought back some ding dong unhinged side with that briefcase destruction situation too, so I did like that. Overall, I was entertained with this match and all the antic that happened around it. I'm satisfied. Then backstage, Chelsea and Piper stop Bianca and Jade trying to go talk to GM Nick Aldis about the Tag Team Championship rematch. Then Bianca is like, these are getting on my nerves. So we get this Chelsea Green versus Bianca Belair singles match. Chelsea, by the way, looked really cute with yet another new gear. The match was really quick though. Bianca tries to take out Chelsea with KOD, but Chelsea rolls her up, but Bianca rolls Chelsea up again, picking up a quick win. And post-match, the tag team champions Alba and Isla shows up on the screen and they say, we will see about the rematch. I don't know. Alba and Isla are kind of confusing me with what they're trying to achieve here. Like, is this their mind game? Or are they just like dodging challengers? Like, but confused on what they're trying to accomplish, but this match was cute. Uh, good? Not bad! SummerSlam is next weekend, and it's gonna be in Cleveland. I'm so excited to go this year. We got big championship matches announced, and lately my favorite part of going to PLEs is that getting to meet all of you Ring the Bell fams. I've been seriously having so much blast partying with all of you guys, talking about wrestling and all that stuff in different cities, Philadelphia, Toronto, Tampa. And if you're also thinking about going to SummerSlam but didn't get the tickets yet, do not worry at all because I am here to introduce you to Game Time. Literally how I buy tickets for anything nowadays, including the IU concert I'm going to this Thursday. I'm 
I'm so excited about that. And if you're into MLB Major League Baseball, there are the authorized ticket marketplace for MLB tickets, which makes you getting tickets faster and easier. Let's take a look at SummerSlam right now. Okay, so searching for SummerSlam. So already you can see the super deal, $80. Amazing deal. So it kind of shows like how great the deal is. It's also showing the cheapest tickets right now. This one, another amazing deal in the 300 level. I've been only using game time to buy any type of tickets and I've never looked back because it's so awesome. Because I'm sure that you all had the experience of trying to get a ticket and get jumped last minute by the taxes and fees and you never know if you're getting the best deal or something like that. I've certainly experienced it trying to get the ticket for this week's IU concert because it sold out like instantly and the reseller prices were insane and game time has been saving me so much money and headache. It shows the view from all seats in the venue. They also show you the all-in pricing so you don't feel scammed at the checkout with surprise charges and the peace of mind comes from the game time guarantee they have where if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, they will credit you 110% of the differences. So satisfaction is definitely guaranteed. And also the last minute deals. You can snag tickets right up to the start of the event or sometimes even after it starts, helping you save up to 60% off for anything from sports, concert, theater, everything. Also, it's just really easy to buy, just two taps in seconds. So let's all party at SummerSlam together. Take the guesswork out of buying wrestling tickets or MLB tickets, concert with game time. Go download the game time app, create an account and use code ring the bell for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code ring the bell, R-I-N-G-T-H-E-B-E-L-L-E -L -L -E for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Moving on to WWE Raw, the unnamed lesbian team with a straight ally, Zoe dominated our screen again. Please pick a name so I can call you accordingly. Also, I love how their like new sign is like, they're doing some like finger stuff together. So we first got Lyra Vicaria versus Sonya Deville singles match. First of all, Sonya looked really good here with that black and white gear, the coat, the high ponytail, she looked so good. And the funny thing was that the commentary had to tell us what Sonya's role is for this team. Apparently, Zoe and Shayna were treated so unfairly and Sonya had to come change things up. I guess Sonya is really working hard for the gay rights backstage. The match was pretty good. I love that they were really laying their to each other. I mean, yes, we will have to talk about the little minor awkward moment of Lyra yelling repeatedly at Sonya to let go for the gut wrench powerbomb. What you thinking here, Cole? But I think it ended up looking pretty cool. At this point, we needed like a compilation video of every opponent yelling at Sonya mid-match. It's a tradition at this point. And at the end of the match, Shayna and Zoe interrupt the match, pushing Lyra off the top rope while referee was distracted. Lyra then gets distracted, kicking Shayna outside, letting Sonya hit Devil's Advocate for the win. Yeah, she did get yelled by Lyra, but ultimately the match was really fun. I'll say it was satisfied. Then later, the team comes out again because Zoe had a match with Zelina later in the show. And this match was kind of funny because Zelina was still injured from last week's attack from Shayna so she had like a cast on her arm not clear to wrestle at all and it was both really amazing to see Zelina putting up a fierce fight with only one arm and really goofy at the same time for Zoe to really struggle to take care of one armed Zelina let's be real if it's like one armed Naya or Rhea or Jade maybe but Selena, I gotta say, I did love the commentary shouting out, hashtag push Selena. Ending was pretty cool. So Shayna gets involved again, tripping Zelina with Katana, Kate, and Lyra all coming out to attack them. And while that's all happening, Zelina accidentally realizes that her arm brace is basically like attacking someone with a foreign object. It's super effective. So she just clocks the heck out of Zoe with the arm brace and picks up a win with coat red. That was a really fun twist to an injury. I love this, stratified. You know, I gotta say, ever since Trish clocked Nidia, with her arm brace back in 2004. I always wanted to see a heel character faking an injury, winning matches with the arm brace. So I don't know if that's where Zelina is going with it, but it was cute. I liked it. And Rhea and Liv's situation gets even weirder at this time. So backstage, Liv approaches Daddy Dom and tells him, it's all gonna be okay, whatever, whatever. And Dom's like, what are you even talking about? So later in the ring, Rhea is all pissed about this. So she calls out Liv Morgan saying, if you want him, come and get him. So Liv comes out from the crowd and says she has feelings for Dom and Rhea knows that Dom has feelings for Liv too because gorgeous men like Dom don't go for girls who look like Rhea and they go for girls like Liv. <laughs> okay, that was some classic diva promo right there. I think it is kind of funny though, by the way, because earlier in the Mania season, Becky was dragging Rhea for being too diva, doing stink face and all that stuff. Now the table has turned, huh? So Rhea gets all pissed off at this comment until Dom grabs the mic and tells Liv that he actually hates her and he can't stand her and I guess he said a lot of more terrible stuff in Spanish which my friend Vin translated for you guys and I guess Liv understood everything by 
bilingual queen attitude, and we see Liv turning back all crying, all heartbroken. And the segment ends with Rhea licking, kissing Dom. So in real life, this will be the end of the story. Rhea and Dom will continue to date, and Liv will go her own way looking for another man like a normal person, right? But this is wrestling, and honestly, I have no idea where this can go. I did think Liv crying like a little baby at the hallway was really cute, so we'll see if this whole crying is part of her seductress plan, or will she go batshit crazy from this heartbreak? WWE NXT, we had NXT Women's Champion Roxanne Perez come out to cut a promo, and she is going full on AJ Realness, giving almost this pipe bomb promo. It's really, really good. She says she's on track to break everyone's record, including Charlotte, Bianca, Rhea, everyone, and she even addresses the whole Julia and Stephanie Baker news online, saying that they ultimately don't compare to this prodigy. And as soon as Roxanne mentions the two names, you can see the crowd is like really, really excited about it. They start like standing up, trying to see if someone's gonna show up here, but no, it is just Thea Hale, and Roxanne just rips her apart, because let's be honest, nobody, nobody thinks after beating Lola, Jordan, Natalia, Chelsea, Thea is beating Roxanne, let's be real. Roxanne calls Thea a little girl starting a brawl, with Thea ultimately locking Roxanne in Kimura Lock until Ridge Holland stopping Thea. He later explains why he did that, because if she breaks the champion's arm, there is actually no, there is just no championship match, so, which makes sense, <clears throat> but if he wants to stop me too, I'm down for it. Like I said, this is probably just a filler feud until the big guns arrive, and Roxanne just addressing the elephant in the room, completely looking down upon. Thea actually made this a lot more real and interesting for me. Roxanne seriously just really, really good. So I'm actually kind of excited to see this match. Then we have this whole weird Barbie situation, which was the highlight of the NXT episode for me. First, NXT Women's North American Champion Kalani Jordan is interviewed backstage, and creepy Wendy Chu interrupts, holding a headless Barbie. And this bleeds into Izzy Dame versus Tatum Paxley match, following several weeks of weird obsession. And this match was actually really great. Tatum interrupting Izzy's entrance from the get-go, being so freaking weird, and Tatum is expanding her moveset so much, but they all meet her weird-ass personality, so it's amazing. In case you are, please do not sleep on Tatum. She's one of the best we've got in NXT right now. Izzy is also really, really good. She brings the intensity, the power. She's so tall, her legs are so long, that her kicks are beautiful. And at the end, Izzy misses Tatum and shoves herself into the ring post again, and Tatum takes Izzy out with the finisher, Psycho Trap, just really, really unique, really eerie finisher that fits her perfectly. Yes, I know that it's Stardom Suzuki's tequila shot. I really think it fits Tatum's character perfectly here. This was a really, really good match with captivating storyline that was really built for only a few weeks, but it really totally worked here. I'm very satisfied. Post-match, Wendy Chu hands Tatum the headless Barbie that she was holding, and Tatum puts the head on it, and backstage, Tatum asks Kiana if she wants to play with the dolls, but Kiana's like, we're too old to be playing with dolls. I'm sorry. I'm, 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 so, I'm, all the, all the act. Why was I watching this home and just got dragged for no reason? Tatum then takes out this black Barbie doll she was holding, teasing that she's coming for Kalani next. I'm excited about this. Then we have Lola Vice interview and she's fully baby face here. Then Fallon, JC, Jasmine interrupts saying that she's uh, just a rookie and she should go back to MMA. And Lola's like, Jasmine's the biggest rookie here. What are you even talking about? And I'm like, literally, that's the question I had this whole time too. And JC's like, oh, she's good because she's with us. From this, we get Lola Vice versus JC Jane match where JC targets Lola's broken fist from the championship match, but Lola catches JC with the spinning back fist for the win. Then post-match beatdown by the veterans, and Carmen Petrovic and Sol Ruka run out for the save, so I guess this is gonna be the big match they're gonna have. I'm gonna be honest, I kind of don't like that Lola is a baby face because she was so spicy as a heel. I don't know how you guys feel, maybe she got too popular, not sure. And this match was fine for me. Uh, good? Not bad! Also, why does JC keep losing? Her mask is so cool. I thought this rebranding will work for her favor. Then we got OTM with Jada Parker versus the OC with Mitchin. Mitchin's really working overtime. The highlight was Jada Parker taking out Kara Anderson with the ass shot and Mitchin hitting eat defeat on Bronco. Then she flies out to Jada outside of the ring and the OC ultimately picks up a win here. The feud between Jada and Mitchin continues even after that wild street fight match. I'm here for it. Stratified. And the other thing that was kind of noteworthy was Ren Sinclair trying to join no quarter catch crew with my sexy man Miles born in there. I mean, me too, girl. So she has dirt on them because she saw them get rid of someone, I guess, and she says she will wrestle her way into being in this group. Moving to AEW Dynamite, we have Mercedes Monet's open challenge for the TBS Championship with Nyla Rose challenging for the title. Before the match, we see Mercedes talking to the Bucks, thanking them for banning the fan Britt Baker backstage, and then we get this random moment of Okada crushing over Mercedes, asking to see that CEO then. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's see where this goes. The match was 
was fire as you expected. Nyla is so funny when she just stops Mercedes mid move and she just yells at her and Mercedes like squeaks after it was just perfect. <laughs> And that hanging leg drop is literally my favorite Nyla Rose move. And of course, Mercedes served it with her selling. Oh, so good. So good. Ending of this match was so camp. I love it. My camp queen, Mercedes, she hits top rope bulldog and pulls out gloves mocking Brit. But hers is better because she has nails on it. Then she puts Nyla in a lockjaw. Brit's finisher, but she's not a dentist. So she doesn't quite know how to put the pressure on. So it backfires with Nyla biting her fingers. So she quickly adjusts and put Nyla on a bank statement to tap her out. Really, really fun match, I'm stratified. Post-match, Mercedes goes out to a fan mysteriously wearing a mask and tears their sign saying DMD is better than CEO, only to find out, to everyone's surprise, it was Britt Baker all along. <laughs> Are we surprised? The Mercedes just like starts running away, waddling with the two titles that she's holding, and then this security guard stops Mercedes, who's running away for her safety for God knows why. And yeah, we have a bit of a face-off here. A mess. This post-match situation kind of confused me because like, what is going on? Like, why is Mercedes running from Brit. This is the second week in a row she's been running from Brit for no reason. She is a heel, yes, but she's definitely not a cowardly heel. I mean, sure, it's a heel thing to do, but like Mercedes literally crashed Brit's promo two weeks ago, shoved her face, had no qualms about that, and then from there she's like, now running from Brit, like math isn't mathing here. This literally isn't Mercedes that we all know, so we will see why she's running if they ever explain that. Then we have timeless Tony Storm come out. Never mind, it's just Mariah. May in Timeless Tony Storm get up here to fool us again. They do look really, really similar. And she just stands there feeling the hate from the crowd and this random moment of Tony Schiavone from commentary calling her a I'll speak Come on now. Like, what was that about? The right commentary way of saying is Jezebel, okay? Not Jezebel. Mariah then says everybody saw the turn coming except for Tony, and it was just so easy that she had so much fun stringing Tony along, and she just can't wait to take the old horse and kill it in front of as many people as possible at All In. And she declares All Elite Wrestling is now all about Mariah. I gotta say, great performance, great promo from Mariah. She really has it all. Like, she's got everything. Full package. And this coming Dynamite, she's set to debut the Glamour Mariah made. So I'm excited about that too. She's seriously killing it. Such a big fan. AEW Rampage was like, whatever. Chris Dylander had a match with a local competitor. Yeah, whatever this is. Let's just set up a one-on-one -on -one match with Willow and Olin. All out, whatever. Then we got a backstage interview with Soraya. And she just talks about how she's so shook that she isn't scheduled for All In because she's the living legend. She's a superstar. And she will find a way into the show. So we'll see how that goes. And in AEW Collision, we got Sky Blue versus Hikaru Shida following last week's challenge from Sky. By the way, quick apologies for the cowboy comment. Apparently, that's just because they were at Calgary for their Stampede weekend. How would I know? This match really quickly went south, unfortunately, because Shida did this crossbody splash onto Sky, and Sky suffered a legit ankle injury, so hoping for a quick recovery from Sky. Post match, very frustrated, Shida does an interview. She says she's still looking for a fight, and she wants to fight Britt Baker for going straight for TBS Championship since coming back. She's mad about it. I don't know if she's like teasing a heel turn. I would love to see heel Sheeta because it's about time. And next we get a huge lumberjack match between Thunder Rosa and Deanna Perrazzo. And last week, remember, Thunder Rosa suggested this match because Deanna made a lot of enemies. But turns out Thunder Rosa has plenty of enemies herself. I'll almost even say that she has more enemies than Deanna. So our lumberjacks, or basically just ROH women's roster, was divided into Team Deanna and Team Rosa. This was really a a fun lumberjack match with tons of fun spots crashing into the lumberjacks outside that superplex to the outside and thunder just diving onto everyone outside and while chaos continued outside as roh girlies just start fighting with their own businesses kaya used this opportunity to hand diana a turnbuckle and she clocks thunder rosa with it picking up a cheap win yet again i am loving the new pairing of diana and taya together and this match was a serve great both in and outside of the ring i'm very satisfied they really have incredible chemistry so this is kind of a case of like fight forever but i am excited to see them go full all out down the line with some kind of wild stipulation match steel cage hell in a cell texas death match i'm here for it let's do it all right heading into big tna pay-per-view anniversary, we had three women's matches but two unfortunately ended up on a countdown show so first match was the fatal four-way tasha steels versus giselle shaw versus zaya brookside versus fabi apache from triple h returning to tna i gotta say i freaking love tasha's cruella deville look she's honestly so underrated y'all she's really 
serving looks for some of these big pay-per-views and this was a total serve and giselle shaw thank you so much for bringing back your quintessential diva theme song because that was such a bop this match was so incredible they only got like seven minutes so they went 100 miles which made this like super fast paced action-packed match love giselle's double falcon arrow then giselle catches apache mid-air nailing a huge power bomb as you can tell giselle was kind of a protagonist of this match then she spears zaya and finishes her up with a running knee only for tasha to toss her out of the ring to steal the win so tasha was the winner here amazing match and as much as giselle was the main star of the match i'm really happy that tasha pick up a win because i'm really rooting for her and i am kind of ready for her spotlight to be back on her i was kind of scared that it will never come back so i'm so i'm happy i'm stratified then we got knockout tag team championship masha slanovich and alicia edwards the champions versus spitfire alicia looked amazing here by the way masha is always great as you know i always talk about it but i almost feel like she's like letting other people shine more in these matches because jody threat really caught my eye in this match she did great great here especially at the end going ham on both alicia and masha with the german and masha the mishinoku driver on alicia on top of masha then spitfire hit a huge heart attack with jody just going crazy on the camera and the commentator just like dragged jody is she trying to stop the world from seeing the pin and maybe jody was too excited because at the end she charges at masha but misses and instead goes head first into the championship belt that lish hung up there on a corner and loses after lish's top rope bulldog really really fun match great action i'll say stratified i do wonder what's next for spitfire because i i do see them really coming together as a team and the match we've been all waiting for knockouts championship jordan grace a champion versus ash by elegance ash came and served here with this elegant toga style dress gold dress this goddess giving gear and really this match was a match i think a lot of ash slash dana brooke fans were waiting for since joining tna this was a big match in a big stage that she could finally prove herself as the wrestler that she didn't have the opportunity to show in wwe and you could tell that she came prepared to show that not gonna lie i could sense some nerve from ash but i think that's natural ultimately i think this was a really good showing from her that reversal of juggernaut driver to canadian destroyer followed by rarefied air which jordan did block with their knees that whole sequence was awesome we then see the top rope slice bread which was also beautiful but at the end of 13 minute match grace catches ash with a gut wrench powerbomb followed by a huge juggernaut driver for the win honestly not gonna lie i'm glad that ash didn't win right away here let's be honest the build for this match was quite awful it really wasn't giving and ash has been so campy and comedic until really this match so i think this match successfully positioned her in a really good spot as a credible threat finally to get the second chance at the title yeah hopefully we'll see a bit more dangerous out of ash on top of that camp and jordan grace of course do i even need to say it yes ash did her thing but jordan was there all along her dedication to serve banger after banger after banger after banger needs to be praised to the highest of heights she's incredible i'm so satisfied outside of these three matches we see steph glander come back from australia and she comes out after PCO becomes a TNA digital media champion, she then proposes to PCO with PCO accepting it. So we'll see where this love story goes. Is she really in love or is she here for the gold? We'll see. And lastly, oh my God, there's so much wrestling. I want to quickly go over ROH because there was a lot to cover already. So ROH Women's World Champion Athena opens a show with the clutches. So she's still injured, but she was seen moving around really well last week. So she had to address that. She just said that was adrenaline. She says she's legit injured, but she still will face Queen Ami at death before dishonor this coming friday and billy starks will defend her tv title against red velvet and they said next week on our wage queen aminata will have five minutes of uninterrupted time of interview so we'll see whatever that means then both queen aminata and red velvet had their um, local competitor matches quick ones but i do have to do a little quick shout out to red velvet for that beautiful spinning natural selection finisher looked awesome she's seriously so underrated and there was this incredible main event lights out match between diamante and layla hirsch i love love that toilet plunger spot it was so silly but i love it and layla goes through a diamante on a table outside with this beautiful moon salt and from there it seems like diamante started bleeding that spot was amazing but i gotta say so she started bleeding from her ear from this spot and i was actually wondering why she was wearing an ear bandage on collision i was like is this some kind of political statement <laughs> turns out she injured her ear during this no disqualification match and at the end diamante picks up a win with this massive code red to her driving her through the table for the win great great match satisfied oh my god these reviews are getting too long but 
great things are happening with women's wrestling because it's really popping. So what can I say? Check out the Chelsea Green interview if you haven't. And there's more interview coming. So get ready for that. And if you still need SummerSlam tickets or any tickets, really check out Game Time. I really do love them. And if you want to follow me on what I'm up to, you can follow me at DSN on Instagram and ring the bell DS on Twitter. And I'll see you next time. Bye.